May we be worthy to praise, glory, and thanksgiving, worship, honor, praise, exaltation, greatness, and beauty to the Savior who fights for us, concluded the mysteries of the prophets, and completed the parables of the seers. He confirmed the types of the foreshadowers and fulfilled the images of the ancients. He made the speech of the preachers glorious, gave the word and power to the evangelists, and they proclaimed his gospel to the four quarters and gathered the people to nations. For his dominion will worship to the good one, his new glory and honor at this time and at all feasts, moments, hours, seasons, and days of our lives, now and in all ages, forever. The bill of evil was torn up and shredded. By it all the things passed away and were fulfilled, and everything became new by it. By it the debt of the transgression of the commandment was repaid. The host of the adversary was scattered, and hope dawned upon the faithful by the sin sign of the salvific and life-giving cross, the cross, the great cause of blessings, the cross, the sign of victory, the cross, the principle of dogmas. The cross, the hope of believers, the cross, the strengthener of all Christians, the cross, the font of life, the cross, the intercessor of blessings, the cross, the key of paradise, the cross, the slayer of the serpent, the cross, crusher of the head of the dragon, the cross, destroyer of all sin, the cross, the banisher of death, the cross, the crusher of error, the cross, the shame of infidels, the cross, the staff of human race, the cross, the dissolver of decay, the cross, the light of the world, the cross, the pride of our witness, the cross, the root of life, the cross, the crown of believers, the cross, the foundation of churches, the cross, the uprooter of shale, by the cross, the resurrection dawned upon us, by the cross, the enemy was defeated. By the cross, we were restored to paradise. The cross, the rampart of life, the cross, the rafter of our altars. The cross, the armor in battle, the cross, the sign of tranquility and reconciliation. The cross, the icon of the word of God. The cross, the pledge of inheritance, the cross, the confidence of the prophets. The cross, the honor of the apostles. The cross, the teachings of teachers, the cross, the rampart of the Holy Church, the cross, the perfection of love, the cross, the fear of demons, the cross, the staff of wonders, the cross, the palm of parables, the cross, the consummation of all priestly labor. By the cross, our sacrifices are perfected, by the cross, our prayers are sealed. By the cross our bodies are signed, by the cross our senses are equipped. By the cross our souls are preserved, the cross is an insurmountable tower. The cross is a refuge that cannot be shamed. The cross is an invincible rampart, the cross is our fortified citadel, and the village of the escape. The cross is our protection, the cross our refuge, and the cause of our blessings. We celebrate this today, for it is finding our image is found and the rest of our sin is polished off. Our oldness is made new and our souls are illumined by God. And we become family members and kinsmen to the Son of the Heavenly Father. To Him who became present in the flesh, we petition and ask Him that He be for us a consoler in distresses, a rescuer in afflictions, a deliverer from all temptations, a shelter from persecutors, a healer of illnesses, a mender and supporter in heartbreaks, a forgiver of sinners and the giver of relief, and the departed believers that as we celebrate the feast of our his dispensation today, may we be worthy of the place of love and raise glory to him and to his Father and to his Holy Spirit now and at all times, forever.
next hymn. Throughout the centuries in our Syriac tradition, that music was never written down. This music was only written down the last half of the 20th century. So seeing that the Syriac Aramaic population, mostly peasants, sang these melodies for centuries, I have total confidence we can actually get this one. So it's very simple. Last 
to him, Grant that in your glory we may sit one at your right hand and the other at your left. Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking for. Can you drink the cup that I must drink or be baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized? And they said to him, We can. Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink, you shall drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand, or at my left, is not mine to give, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten others heard this, they became indignant at James and John. So Jesus summoned them and he said to them, You know that those who are recognized as rulers over the Gentiles lord it over them. And their great ones make their authority over them felt. But it shall not be so among you. Rather, whoever wishes to be great among you will be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you will be the slave of all. For the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. This is the truth, peace be with you. Paul's letters. The 
chosen ones, the ones who are destined to be fully redeemed and saved, as he says, with the heavenly glory. And on this point, St. Paul, the theologians take and they speak about the two causes of salvation. Salvation is not just something initiated, it's something accomplished, that we find the full restoration of our lives within the divine light of eternity, God. We call the kingdom, Maputo. And this reality, the theologians will say, it has two causes. It has an eternal cause, and it has a cause in time, a temporal cause. The eternal cause is, of course, God. And the paradigm and the exemplar of all of God's intent, which is the divine word, incarnate our Lord Jesus Christ. And that, St. Paul will refer to as being the predestination. That is the first cause of redemption. God calls the human race to himself to be healed and to be restored in its integrity. But of course, God has made us free. So the second cause of our salvation, temporal one, the one in time, the theologians refer to as sanctifying grace. Grace which makes us pleasing to God. That's what sanctifying means. And it's pleasing to God because it's healing us. And it makes us back into what God intended us to be. It's clear that the divine light and infinite charity did not intend us to be petty, backbiting, holding grudges, cutting corners, and the little kind of shortcuts we do in life. That's not God's intention for us. That's why there used to be a day when we would talk about sanctifying grace, mortal sin, venial sin. Because these were the death of that life and that work within us, recreating us into the image that God desired of us. And those of us who may be in our 60s or 70s may have grown children, for whom we are very proud and accomplished great things, everything we could have desired for them. We're very proud of them. But some of us also may have adult children who are mm, a little less than successful. We still love them, love is still present because they're our children. But no, I can't say that we're content with what their life has turned into. If you want, that's a kind of human description of sanctifying grace. God's love continues, even metaphysically for the demon, for Satan. But their damnation and their destruction and their wounds continue because of their free choices. And so that second aspect of sanctifying grace is how we correspond to that eternal cause of salvation, the predestination. And that's why St. Paul is concerned in this letter that everyone be able to hear this doctrine of the glorious cross. The cross which is a scandal to the Jews, he says, trips them up because they want signs. And to the pagans, stupidity, foolishness, because they want wisdom. Give us something that is brilliant in beauty and logic. And so how does God respond to the world? He gives us himself, he gives us his son, crucified. But it is the visible manifestation of that eternal predestination. This is what God does for us because it shows us the horror of sin. God doesn't have to die on Calvary. This is chosen so that we understand what the loss of sanctifying grace means. What it truly means to be walking around as the walking wounded, the walking dead. Not the television show. But the reality of those who live and breathe in a natural life, but who spiritually are dead, and who do not avail themselves of the healing, therapy, the fathers refer to it as, the healing therapeutic aspect of the divine instruments. And so St. Paul says the cross is the visible manifestation of that horror of absence of sin and betrayal. But since God doesn't have to do this, and He chooses to die in Calvary, 
to be betrayed by his own people, to be betrayed by the human race and Israel who has been prepared for 15 centuries. He chooses to embrace all of this freely. But on the night of his arrest, when he asks, who are you looking for? Jesus of Nazareth. St. John tells us they all fall on their butts. They all fall down. Because he's showing from the very beginning of his passion, he is in charge. And at the moment when he dies, which means that most men, and some women, but most men, they die of asphyxiation in crucifixion. You suffocate. You lean forward. You can no longer pull yourself up. You can no longer breathe, so you suffocate. And then you're inspired. But our Lord in that last moment, in a loud voice we're told by the Gospels, says, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And he leans forward and dies, to also show that he is in charge. So the second aspect of the cross, what it manifests to us, is the love of God. How far he will go to show to us the necessity of the healing, of sanctifying grace, that can only take place when we accept the remedy. If I have terminal cancer, the oncologist can tell me that. He might be able to tell me I have a year, two years, three years, six months. And he will lay out a therapeutic regime to sometimes heal, go into remission, sometimes simply to prolong life, in that case, in human medicine. But it's the remission that we're seeking. And I can go home in my denial, and my anger against providence, and decide to forget it. I'm not doing any of it. Just stay home. Medically, of course, I'll die. This is an image of the work of redemption. Grace and therapy of the mysteries is offered to us. But we can also choose to walk away and go home and die. So what the cross is manifesting in this very visible reality is the horror and the disorder of what sin is and what the depth and the profundity of God manifesting His love for us, calling us to Himself. Which is why St. Paul says you must look around and find others who are worthy to confide this message to and these mysteries so that they in turn will pass it on to others. It's the beginning of this chapter. So today in the exaltation of the cross, what we're celebrating is not just the crucifixion, it is the resurrection. This is a day of glory. And in the Eastern traditions, this is one of the central feasts that we have. And throughout Ethiopia, and in Egypt, and in the Middle East, Thursday night you would have had bonfires all around with torchlight processions with the cross being raised in glory and finishing around these bonfires singing these hymns because it celebrates the light which pierces the darkness and for the Syrian tradition this is one of our main festivals so why at St. Joseph's have you never been parading around with night processions say last Thursday with a bonfire at Head of Falls well, because oftentimes, when our immigrants arrive in America, you want to fit in. So a lot of the celebrations that we would have done in the home country, so to speak, were set aside because the Latins are not processing around in processions on September 14th. And as a result, these things went by the wayside. But I think it's time that in the vision of Archbishop Zion, this was meant to be an American chapter of the history of the Church of Antioch. We should reclaim these traditions. And if there's enough people next year, it'll be a Friday next year, so you can sleep in on Saturday morning. We will have a procession. We will have a bonfire. And we will celebrate the resurrection of light in the midst of darkness next year. We're making little baby steps. But they are beautiful traditions. And when we appreciate what we celebrate when this cross goes around the church, 
is the glory and the triumph of God's love over that disorder of sin, then we understand why this ceremony, one, is so long, and two, is so poetic in its beautiful descriptions. Take these home with you, because obviously we have to make more next year, because we're missing page 10, 13, 14, 10, whatever the number was. Take them home because you have the whole listing. Read through over these next weeks. This is the season of the Holy Cross. Read through those descriptions of what the cross is throughout the Sedro, and that long prayer on the second and third page. Meditate on it. Contemplate it. As we enter these last seven weeks of the liturgical year, which is the contemplation of God's love, but also of our death and judgment in the end times. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Now we are on page 9. What is listed as the supplication, Bo'uto de Mordecha, but you see it in Talis. Bo'uto in the Syriac means supplication, that's all it's telling you. But whenever you see these in our red books, you see these italics at the top, usually it's in red or brick. It's telling you it's sung like that. Because most of the time, if things were ever written down, you had just the text. And at the top, it gave you a title, Hail Holy Queen. Daily, daily sing to Mary. And when you look at that text, you know, okay, that's the way we sing, because we know that basic melody. So this is what we have here. Now, I don't know, are we going to do this musically, or are we going to recite it? Okay, we're going to recite it. Bo'uto de Mor Ephra means the supplication of Saint Ephra. So it's telling you the basic Syriac poetic music that she used in the writings of Saint Ephra. Now we can do this. When the cross of my tongue. Let me go through it first. Da, 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 da.
world together, as one by its love, and through you we attain full knowledge, that you efface the power of evil one, by the Lord of the world, who we shall support in body, ceasing by the nature as God. May our eyes look to you, Holy One, of mystical Israel, like was long before us, and we should not hear the encounters of night, for the daytime arrows and the noontime of passion, which are shot at us when the adversary, for you are the mighty refuge, and we worship you and give you thanks, now and all times and forever.
Son of the Father, the glorious Son, appeared in the flesh, and saved us from sin, death, and Satan. Therefore, the Holy Church offers in Christ holy praise to you, O immortal Lord. You were crucified for our sake on your side, of which we three times sign ourselves with your icon. May it be for us a mighty power of assistance against all the dangers of your truth. May we be rescued by you from all harm of soul and body, and from all evil and wicked men. We, with the praise in him to not of sin, may we glorify, praise, and exalt you now and at all times forever. Of your life we cross the east and the west and the north and the south are sanctified in their entirety. May those who are under its arms take shelter and be delivered from all the harm of the adversary. Like the sign of all the houses of the sons of Israel, the senses of our souls and bodies are signed. Let us cry out and be time saved. <laughs> Water heal our souls and bodies and over 
and the love of all mankind. O Lord our God, to you be glory now and forever. Amen. We will continue with the Creed on page 748 and the rest of the Eucharist this morning. We believe in one God. Both living and departing, 
especially those for whom the sacrifice is offered for the intentions of all the members of this parish, and especially for those intentions of Marie Fifa. Remember also all those who share with us today in this offering. Oh, 
they cry out and they proclaim.
Christ who is with us. We hope to find mercy and forgiveness for our sins and for the
and hath made us worthy to share in the body and the blood of your only begotten Son who saved us. Through him and with him, glory and honor are due to you and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Jesus Christ, our Lord and God, you are worshipped and you are holy. Bless and forgive the priests who are the stewards of your people and of your holy church. Forgive the servers of your divine mysteries and all the faithful who have shared in this sacrifice. Care for orphans, help widows, assist the poor and the distressed, satisfy the hungry, and protect all who call upon your holy name in every place. May your name be glorified with that of your Father and your Holy Spirit, who is good, life-giving, and consubstantial with you now and forever. So we will leave the holy water out here for the next few weeks. If you bring vessels, you want to take it with you back to your homes. You can witness the blessings of the water. And of course, you're all invited down for the luncheon. Most of you are certainly aware of that. To celebrate being Fifa's investiture to the order of St. Saint, Saint Gregory. Our beloved Fifa. Okay, Fifa. my beloved brothers and sisters of the nourishment and blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the most holy trinity accompany you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom be glory forever.